Ezekiel 47, starting in verse number one. When you have it, please say amen. And the word of God says, in my vision, reading from the New Living, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gate and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing and through the south side of the east gate. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across the water. And the water was ankle deep. Verse 4 says, he measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time the water was up to my knees. Mm -hmm. And after another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. My God. Then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. My God. Verse 6 says, he asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the riverbank. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. Oh, my God, it's in a desert going into a dead sea. I'm going somewhere. Mm. The water of this stream will make the salty waters of the dead sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Swarms of living things wherever this water flows. Fish will abound in it. Fish will abound in the dead sea for its waters will become fresh. Oh my God. Life will flow as whenever this water flows. Verse 10 said, fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea. Jump over to verse 12. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. Uh, the leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every single month. Mm, mm, mm. For they are watered by this river. Flowing from the temple, my God, value the house of the Lord. My God, the fruit will be for food and the leaves will be for healing. Oh, my God, Father, I thank you for the few minutes. Lord, I already see the time. So therefore, God, just teach with accuracy. It don't take you long. Bless your people. Save somebody's soul. Father God, we are ready to go. We are ready for the healing. We are ready, Father God, for our lives to become a river that's fruitful and productive. Lord, we understand that the gospel has come to affect every area of our lives. So, Father God, today marks a new beginning. As we prepare, Father God, my God, to do business in your kingdom on December the 2nd, 2018. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Please say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have come a long way, church, within the last five and a half years. As I've been stating, we have had the first generation die off some, and we have enter into the second generation. We have killed some giants, and we have prophesied down go Goliath, and many have got saved, many have got recommitted. Uh, to the things of God. Uh, some have shipwrecked and some have went back and life has got on top. Oh my God, but God has took it, brought us to a scripture <laughs> that if received can bring immediate healing. But you determine that healing. You determine what you get out of Ezekiel 47 by your perception and your attitude this afternoon. If you don't believe that God is able, then this word will be just another word. But if you are desperate and sick and tired of being sick and tired and you know God, oh my God, is capable of doing the very things that you need him to do, my God, ah, and your heart is open, you will receive 
something to fight the enemy with the last 20 so days of the year. I am excited. Pastor Teresa, when I walked past you, you told, I heard what you said, woman of God, but I need you to know and Tanya to know that this pastor is all right. I'm still on the wall. Oh, my God, I'm just being stretched at another level. And so what used to excite me, don't excite me no more. Oh, the pastor that I used to walk into the church with, God is balancing it out, my God, to maturity. Mm. And God is teaching me, my God, the pastor that would want to be pastor. And don't concern yourself with that is not ready to be pastor. Carry on the work that God has called you to do, son. So I'm settled. I thank God for my daughters, my God, that can catch me in the spirit and intercede and pray for me. But pastor is in a good place. I'm in a good place because my dime is sitting right there. I'm in a good place, my God, because many great things is going on in my life. I can find all kind of things to be complaining about, but I got so much to be grateful about. And the number one thing, my God, that I got to be grateful about is just what we did with Pastor Dean led us in, the Lord's Supper. Because of what Christ did, Joyce, we're here today. And I get to do business in God's kingdom. That right there is an honor in itself because I could and you could be dead. A lot of us that don't register, but for some of us that been on death door, that didn't see death flash past us, understand that it's truly an honor to have breath in your body. So as we go into the scripture, I want to talk to you. Just a little bit. I want you to understand this this river. In the Bible, the Dead Sea, meaning that stuff that went into the Dead Sea, it stayed. It wasn't no outflow. Just like Christians, some of us just Dead Seas. Everything going in, but ain't nothing going out. Oh, my God. But God has a way of doing miracles. Mm. Come on, somebody. And so as we move forward, this is a millennial vision. Mm, mm, that God has given Ezekiel. My God, Ezekiel is envisioning a time when the Lord would bring about absolute healing in the nation of Israel. A time when the river of God's grace and blessing church will flow from his throne. Value the house of the Lord. Value the kingdom of heaven. My God, the river of healing will flow from God's throne. Are you with me so far? Oh, my God, and we'll refresh the promised land. I would like to ask you a question this afternoon. How many of you can honestly raise your hands this afternoon and tell me that beyond any shadow of a doubt, you are exactly in the center of God's will and that you are right where God wants you to be in your spiritual growth? Can anybody say that? You are smack dab in God's will. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you don't need to do nothing else, that you good, that you really have already heard job well done, and you don't know why God ain't took you out of her yet. Is that anybody, before I move forward, is that anybody that say they are doing everything that God created them to do? Is that anybody? Is that anybody? Because I sure need to pray for you. Mm. The truth of the matter is we all have plenty of room for improvement church you see what has happened in the modern church my God listen to me church is that many have become far too cautious and comfortable by giving their all to Jesus yeah yeah I really believe that there are many in the church today right here who are afraid of going deeper in God and I want you to notice three aspects and I know I'm not going to get through them all but I'm going to do my best to teach you point one Three aspects of this prophecy that went across and went throughout the land. And I want you to see if you can gauge yourself this afternoon. Ask yourself, do I really want what God has for me? Do I really? Why am I getting up coming to church? Why I'm in 12? Why do I go to class? Why do I read my Bible? Why do I pray? Why? Do you really want what God has for you? Point number one. Let's look at the vision. Oh, this is good. The spirit is real calm. Let's look at the vision. Let's look at what Ezekiel saw. He saw a river. This river is a type of the Holy Spirit. There are three ways in which this river represents the spirit and his work in the life of the believer. 
So up on the point number one, I want you to write down the source, source. The throne of God. The Holy Spirit is like this river. It came directly from the throne of God. The Bible says in John, the gospel, the 15th chapter, he says, I am the vine and you are the branch. He says, as long as you and I stay connected to the vine, the Bible says that you and I will produce fruit. You and I need to understand that in the natural, my God, that a tree, a branch that stay connected to the tree, my God, and properly connected to the tree, it will produce the results that it's supposed to produce. It will produce the fruit, thank you, Holy Ghost, that it is supposed to produce. But when you take a branch and disconnect it from the tree and leave it on the ground, eventually that branch will dry up and die. Am I, y'all with me so far? And so you and I got to understand that God is your source. The only reason why you and I got breath in your body and you walked up in here, my God, on your own two feet, my God, and you can understand and hear, my God, and see, my God, what the Spirit of God is doing this afternoon is because God is your source. And if we really got the revelation, my God, of God being our source, I think we would try to stay connected to our source more often. I, 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 if we really understood the power and the benefits, my God, that you and I get, my God, when we stay properly connected to the source. Mm. Oh, my God, if we really understood, my God, the fruit that will remain if we stay properly connected in, uh, to the source. Or if we really understood that that frustration. That anger, that bitterness, that depression, that oppression, all the stuff that you and I got going on in our life. If we understood, if we just plug in to the source and stay plugged into the source, we would see God move and do some things in our life. Are you with me so far? Yeah. And so you got to understand this river that we're dealing with, my God, it, its source come from the throne of God. Yeah. Yeah. Where is your source coming from this afternoon? Who and what are you really depending on? Is God really your source? Or is it really your job? Come on, somebody. Or is it really your significant other? Come on, somebody. Is it your 401K? My God, is it your car? Because truth be told, your car don't get you to your job. God gets you to the job. He just used the car to get you there. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I'm going to make it as simple and layman as I can. Who is your source? So before I move further, the title of the sermon is Go Deeper in the River. Some of you, my God, it is frustrating in your life right now because you are trying to stay safe when God is saying go deeper. And so therefore, all you're doing is causing yourself a lot of unnecessary mental anguish and pain because you and I don't want to do it the way God say do it. And if you and I just submit to our source, my God, and let God orchestrate his will through you, my God, I promise you, you will see a more fruitful life. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, I'm trying to get you to understand, my God, coming to church don't mean that God is your source. You have to stay connected to the source. And when you and I stay connected to the source, you'll begin to see things shift. You'll be see God, you'll see the hand of God moving in your life. You'll see doors open, my God, that you never thought would open, my God. You'll see God doing some things that will blow your mind, my God. Unexpected stuff happening, my God. Money showing up, my God. Doors opening up, my God. Job opportunities, my God. Promotions, my God. Oh, my God, you'll see God move. Student loans and stuff getting paid off. Come on, Jackie. My God, all that type of stuff just happened. Oh, my God, you got $30,000, $40,000 with your student loan. All of a sudden, they go in and they tell you, uh, what you here for? <laughs> oh, my God, that's a zero account. They don't think it happened, Jackie. I need somebody give God a hand. But so it's so vital to stay connected to the source. And let's look at the second thing. I want to move. Let's look at his course. Write down the word course. Oh. So I got a source and I got a course. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Are y'all with me so far? Mm-hmm. From the altar. Notice, my, my God, notice that this river came from the altar or the place where sacrifices were made. My God, my God, the course is the water of life. This river that we're talking about, this vision that God gave the man of God, the prophet Ezekiel, my God, is, a, is, a, is the water of life. Are you connected to the water of life? Are you connected to the giver of life? Are you, my God, are you so intertwined and locked in to the source and the giver of life? And my God, is, is living water flowing up out of you? Is there a aroma about you outside of church? 
Oh my God, your unsaved friends, how do they feel when they get in your presence? <laughs> do they do they conversation change? <laughs> oh my God, do they say, oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to cuss, my God. My detail man, my God, I had my wife's car truck detailed yesterday, and he got up in the car, brother scooter, and he slipped up. He said, oh, excuse me, Pastor Jew. <laughs> oh my God, do, do, do people respect that you profess to be a man or a woman of God? Oh my God, do people, my God, shift, my God, their behavior, my God? Do they turn down their music when you walk up to the car? My God, oh my God, do people respect who you are as a man, a woman, a God? Or when you come around, it's the same old, same old. They don't see no power. They don't feel no type of way when you're around. They have no respect for who you profess to be as a man, a woman, a God. I'm going somewhere. My God, are you with me so far? Ask yourself that question. How are you viewed outside of the church? What course are you on? Is there living water flowing up out of you? Can someone come and drink from your fountain this afternoon? Will they get bitter water or will they get sweet water if they drink from your fountain this afternoon? Who am I talking to in the church? Oh my God, I'm just going to teach this one point, Tony. I promise you. Can they drink from you? Can God trust you with the next? Everybody wants the next, but can you be trusted with the next? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody want the next. I'm redundant, but can you be trusted with the next? See, God knows if he is your source. And God also knows, my God, if he have your heart, we can direct your course. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. Are you with me so far? Mm, mm, mm. The water of life. The word of God says in the gospel of John that you, when, when you and I read the word of God, the word of God washes you. <laughs> oh, my God. This is called the water of life. This river that I'm talking about, my God, is the river of life. I read to you in the hearing, my God, oh, my God, of 47, 1 through 12, my God, that there's healing, my God. Oh, my God, that this river produces life, that this river produces fruit. But guess where source is? Romans chapter 8, verses 5 down to 12 and all that, it gives the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. The Bible says a man that has his mind, no gender, uh, set on things of the flesh can only fulfill the things of the flesh. See what I'm trying to say? Oh my God, and they are being controlled and led by the flesh. Oh, y'all don't believe me. Y'all looking. So let's go teach the Holy Ghost. Because I want you to become rivers of living water. Romans 8, 5 said, those who are dominated by the sinful nature, that's your flesh, that's all, that's our flesh, think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Lord, or please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind Leads to death, y'all. And that's ultimately physical death. So is it that, like I taught us on past Wednesday about standing on the wall, are you angry and frustrated at other people and other things when you should be angry and frustrated at yourself because your own mind and perception and attitude is killing you internally? Oh, it's everybody else's fault, but it's really you. <laughs> oh, T.D. Jake said the enemy in me. My God said the enemy wants you to divert. My God, and look at somebody else. It's called deflecting responsibility. Oh, we put it on somebody else. I ain't got to deal with it, my God. Oh, my God, if it's Dion's fault, I ain't got to deal with it. If it's Lisa's fault, I ain't got to deal with it. My God, how many of you, my God, are shift blaming? Yes, 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 yes. We still in the river. We talking about going deeper. And so in order to go deeper, you got to allow God to do some surgery on that mind. Because it's with the mind that you and I serve God. Man, many of us, my God, discredit ourselves, my God, because of the way we think. I'm going to leave that alone. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. That go your freedom right there. And I'm going to close the book because I want to move on. Two thoughts. One leads to death, one leads to life. You determine that course. <laughs> you, not God. You determine. Is you going to produce fruit or are you going to produce death? Your choice. Right here. Everything's right here. I said before you, life and death, blessing and curses, choose life. Yeah. It's a choice. So are you choosing life or are you choosing death? That determines your source and your course. Yeah. Right there. So many of us is bitter, frustrated, or whatever, 
But ask yourself, is it my mind? Am I the one defeated? But it's Mike's fault? Am I really the problem? But I don't want to accept that I'm the problem. So I got to find somebody to put the problem on. The mind that's dominated or controlled by the flesh produces death. The ultimate end result of an unhealthy mind, Minister Tony, is death. Killing your purpose, killing your potential. Who in my life is suffering because I'm choosing to make deathly decisions? What is dying that should be living? Am I thinking about stuff and bringing physical sickness upon my body? Because I'm stressed out. Because I'm evolved around people and situations that I know that's unhealthy for me and it's stressing me out. And now I'm sick and I'm broke down. My energy is sap. You're killing yourself, church. This is deep stuff. Mm. So we might need to look at self more than we look at people for our problems. Because you control your mind. God gives you and I the free will. But if you flip these pages, eventually your will will die and you will pick up this will. Now, will you bounce back and forth? At times you will because we're human beings. But for the most part, as a man thinking, so he becomes. If you feel your mind up on flipping these pages and they get this word down on you, when an enemy comes against your mind, the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you shall be utterly cast down. Different things that contradict the word of God, my God, you can have you have the authority through your mind to cast it down, my God. Stuff that will tell you, no, nah, you can't, but the, you like, no, nah, no, nah, yes, I can, because Romans 8, 28 says I can. You talking about I can't, yeah, Philippians 4, 13 says I can do all things, my God, through Christ. My God, you saying I'm sick, that devil is alive. The Bible says I'm healed by his stripes. My God, you say I'm, I'm bound up, the Bible says I'm free, because the Son has set me free. See, you got to know how to stand on, thus says the Lord. See, that's a mind that's, that's winning, my God. Some of us, my God, we ain't winning because we ain't winning in our thought life. Yeah. And whoever get the mind, get the life. That's a cold-blooded principle right there. But you got to know how, my God, when the enemy try to come in and count on my God and try to speak doubt, you got to know how to speak faith. When the enemy come try to tell you what you ain't, you better be telling what he is. Why do you keep believing the enemy's lies? So what am I trying to say? Let me go a little deeper. I'm going back to the title of the sermon. For a lot of us, we got to go deeper, include myself. God got me in an uncomfortable place. I am being stretched. My, I'm starting to get a whole lot of out people that don't go. I'm getting all kind of people reaching for me to get me to do things. My God, meet phone numbers and inboxes, all type of stuff. Can I meet with you? Can I talk to you? My God, I need to meet with you. My God, all this old different type of stuff. Different Pastor Jeff told me this morning, he said, I got some loud, oh, I got some good stuff I need to tell you, but I can't tell you right now. It's all kind of stuff going on. Then I'm seeing phone numbers from different people in my former life. My God, oh, my saying, can you call me, Jew? Can you call me? I need to talk to you. My God, I got different people reaching out to me for all kind of stuff. There's people hurting all around you, my God, that need what you and I got to have, my God. But do you got the rivers of living water flowing in you? Oh, my God, that they can get healed, my God, when they come in contact with you. Do you got, my God, rivers of living water flowing? People are hurting. Ah, I got to stay in the river. I can't come off the wall. I'm preaching and talking to myself. Oh, my God, because if I know if I shipwreck, I know if I give up, I know if I quit, I know if I tap out, my God, it's going to shock the city of Tulsa, my God, and the country, my God. So I got to stay. So pray for me. Let's look at this next thing. Look at the force of this river. This river had a source. It had a course. And now let's look at its force. There are four things about this river that I want to give you. My God, write this down. It had no feeder stream. Wasn't nothing feeding this but the throne of God. Mm. Ooh, I love access and bishop. I, I, it had no feeder stream. What, what number feed? What nothing feeding this but God? What's feeding you? Come on. <laughs> Who is feeding you? Is it the flesh? Is it lust? Is it greed? Is it bitterness? Why am I dealing with that stuff? Because you got to reverse that and start letting purpose, start letting commitment, <laughs> start letting peace, start letting faith, <laughs> all them different type of things feed you, my God, instead of all that other stuff. We need a total renovation of our mind. Oh, my God, we need our mind to be totally renovated because we feeding and eating on the wrong stuff. 
oh my God, this river, my God, was being fed from the throne of heaven. There was no need for anything to flow into this river, y'all, to give it forth size or power. When it left the throne, talking about God's throne, it possessed all that it needed. Oh, my God. What, what, what this means is this. God doesn't need the world or anything in it, my God. He can get the job done. He needs no feet or strength. Don't you know that what God called for you to do, he has the power to do it? God don't need nobody to help him do what he need to do. God sits high and looks low, my God. Oh, my God. Why are you depending on everything? All you got to do is get connected to the source. All you got to do is get in his will, my God, and watch God do it. You trying to do it on your own flesh and your own strength. The Bible says, curse to the man to lead and trust in all my flesh. All you got to do is get connected to the source and stay properly connected and watch what God does. He don't need no feeder. You trying to get everybody to feed you and the spirit of God just taught you that this river had no feeder. His feeder was God. Oh my God with the devil, my God with the fire treatment should have couldn't do God did immediately in my life. Oh, God don't need nobody. God can fix your marriage. God can fix your finance. God can fix your man. Why are you going to everybody but the source? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good teaching, bro. God had no feeder. Nothing was feeding this but God. For some of y'all, God got, his, got you screwed. He got you in a tight place. Because he's trying to teach you how to depend on him. He's trying to teach you how to, he's trying to break that control that you got. He's trying to show you that I got you. He's trying to build your faith. He's trying to build your trust, my God. He's trying to work stuff up out of He got his hands on you, my God. He said, I don't want nobody to do it. I'm going to do it so I can get the glory. Some of you are fighting against the will of God because it's uncomfortable and it's painful. And you think it's the devil and you think it's everybody else's fault, but it's God that got his hands on you, baby. I told you, you got to know what's God and what's under you, baby. This stream had no feeder. God was his source. God was his source. Oh, you got to go deeper, baby. Coming to church ain't going to get it. Five-minute devotion ain't going to get it. Coming to your 12 meeting when you want to. Not in this hour, in this time, my God. It's too much pain and stuff in this world, my God. Making all these excuses and all that. You're tired, you're beat down and wore out because your life ain't being stewarded right. I sat at the church, so you come in the house, you're giving God leftovers. You don't want to worship, my God. You don't want to pray. You don't want to honor God with your life. None of that stuff, my God, because you're tired and wore out. Because life is beating you up because you're depending on everything but the source. Yeah, yeah. And then I got to pump and prime. We gotta, I got to let worship go 40 hours just to get you to say, Lord, I love you. Sin is killing the body of Christ. Everywhere. I thank God that I understand that, that God is my source. And I cannot disconnect. Oh, Dominique, if I disconnect, I'm done. Yeah, Lord. Let's look at the second thing. Also, it was something about this river that we all need, including the one that's preaching. This river could heal. Do anybody need healing this afternoon? Oh my God, do anybody need to be healed from anything? Most of our, everybody in this church, I know you're writing, so don't nobody take this person, but everybody in this church should have raised their hand because we all need to be healed in our mind. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody got something going on in their mind and in their life, in their body, somewhere. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But this river right here, oh my God, even though it flowed into, Lord, if I had time, into the Dead Sea. Remember the Dead Sea in the scripture had no outflow. Everything going in stayed. And when it stayed, if there's no outflow start, it, it, it dies. But God said in his word, but everything that went into this river, even though it was like a dead sea, it lived. See, God can do the impossible. Is anything too hard for God? Oh, my God. Not only that, my God. God caused this river, my God, to flow, oh my God, in the desert, into the dead sea. And everything that went into it lived. So some of the things you think that's dead, some of the things that you have given up on, that vision, that purpose, that, uh, that bank, I mean, the, 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 the job, my God, that business and stuff that you have given up on, you think that it's dead because you didn't get the credit, you didn't get the loan, so you give it up. God will close several doors to show you now when you quit depending on yourself, now come to the source. Come to the river of healing. Come to that. Come on, somebody. See, you got to understand how this thing works, baby. Some of the things that's going on, it ain't the devil. It ain't your husband. It ain't your wife. It ain't your children. It's God. God has a way of driving you to the river because he's trying to heal you. Let's go a little deeper. This river made the seawater pure. Uh-oh. So, Mike, it made, oh, let me, oh, Lord. <clears throat> uh, Tony, I'm at the man. God, I got to keep you off this pool pit. Interfering with my time. No, he ain't, because I love to wash you. 
Oh my God, this river, let's talk about this healing. This river made the seawater pure when it flowed into and when it flowed into it. A river that has the power to heal this afternoon. I'm talking about this river, y'all. Listen to me. My God, it has the power to heal the broken hearts. The broken hearts, my God, is your, your mind. Because I want to tell you this as I pause right here for a minute. I'm not going to get stuck. My God, a lot of our emotional pain is in our mind. Come on. Yeah. 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 The mind controls the emotions. That's why Romans 8, 5 is so critical, my God, that you, my God, learn to present your mind unto the spirit. Submit to the, let the spirit dominate your mind. Because a lot of the pain that you see like you can't get away from, or a lot of the unforgiveness that feel, and resentment and stuff that you had, you know why you got it? And you, and you can't seem to shake it. And every now and then it to come bother you because it's in your mind. It's in your mind, the pain, the resentment, the bitterness, the emotional pain. My God, even some of the physical healing that we got right now, you know why we sick? Because we stressed out by life. And we frustrated because we read our Bible, we somewhat given, and we're not seeing things shift. We're not seeing things adjust and adapt. We're not seeing no fruit from our coming and our labor and our praying. Is, this, is, 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 it, is it, can I say this? Thank you, Holy Ghost, can I say this? Have you looked at your source? Why are you doing the things you're doing? I'm right back there where the Spirit of God had me start at. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because God judges and looks at our motives. Why are you sitting here? Why you want to marry her? What's the real motive? Why did you marry her? It's, it's, it's past love. See, because a lot of us is dating, but you're not dating in purpose. Because I purpose kick. I purpose kiss. She strengthens me. She heals me. She helps. See, see, you got to be go deeper than because I because love will go. Because she got a cold body. Well, would keep, keep living and that body gonna change. I promise you. See, I'm trying to help you. See, you got to understand. See, God lives. So why, 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 why? And see, a lot of us is frustrated at our significant others. We frustrated at life. My God, but we're not looking at us. And God said, come to the river. Come to the source. My God, lay everything down. Start fresh. Start over. Get in the river. Go deeper and watch what God do. Let God heal your mind. Let God heal your emotion. Let God heal your body. Oh, my God. Let God. Oh, my God. What's the key? Is the key here? Oh, my God. That's a cancer. My God. Oh, cancer free. My God. Somebody give God a hand. She's been found faithful ever since God healed her too. My God, God can heal your broken heart, but most of our, most of our broken heart is our mind is what all I'm trying to say. When you deal with the New Testament, you hear heart, it's talking about your mind. Oh, if God get the mind, he get the life, baby. I promise you, all you got to do is just listen to me, my God. Just listen to your pastor. If you give God your mind, with the mind you and I serve, you got to give your mind over to God. That means you got to give, you got to have day-to-day -day contact with the source. You got to have day-to-day -day contact with rivers of living life, which is God. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Don't you know the word of God has the power to bring complete healing to every aspect of your life? Don't you know the power of the gospel, my God, has enough power to affect every area of your life? Oh, my God, if you ever sell out to God, you'll see God blow your mind. Oh, my God, eyes have not seen, ears and not heard and need to have an end to the mind of those that really love God. If I had time, my God, when I look back sometimes I just give God the glory. Sometimes when you hear me screaming and hollering, I have flashbacks, my God. Oh, because I remember, I remember, I remember, but God. Somebody say, but God. Mm, mm, mm. Let God heal your heart. Let God heal your mind. Let's go a little deeper right quick. Oh, let God heal your broken life. This river can heal your broken life. Guess who this river is, God? God can heal your life. God wants to affect, and I'm not going to get stuck, every area of your life. That means your finances, your generational. That means your marriage, your children, everything connected to you. I'm talking about because everything about you and I as oak trees should represent God. So therefore, don't let your life mock God. Don't let your life mock your testimony. Begin to line your life up with your testimony. If you say God can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, then you got to get free from stuff that God's on top of you. It's, it's dangerous to quote scriptures to people who don't know Christ and your life don't match what you quote because you're a stumbling block. People 
people are looking. Or as I told the man of God, my God, people don't love God like I told y'all Wednesday like they used to, my God. It is dangerous to constantly, constantly, constantly talk about scripture, 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 my God, and don't nothing in your life match what you're talking about. You, when you walk away, they are laughing at you. That's not the rivers of living water. That's not flowing up out of you. God wants to heal our lives. I'm not even finna mess with it. Y'all know the story. Y'all know where I come from. God wants to heal every area. God has that much power. I'm talking about with every area. I'm talking about every area of your life can be totally transformed if you let him. But you got to go deeper. You got to go deeper. You got to get in God and let God get in you. You got to get in that book. When I say flip them pages, quit letting it just be a saying and be obedient and flip the pages. There is no way you can become a butterfly if you don't flip them pages. A caterpillar is crawling, but it gets transformed to become a butterfly. You know how you become transformed? Through the renewing of your mind. Many of us is losing the battle called life. Right here. God is saying, come to the river of life. Come to the source. Let me order your steps. Let me make you a force. Let me make you a part of the solution instead of part of the problem now. Let me reverse the curses in your life. When people laughed at you and mocked you. Now they're getting ready to celebrate you because I'm going to shift your life if you just come to the river of living water. Are you with me so far? God wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your lives. This afternoon. And God wants to heal those broken dreams that you have given up on. Many of you have given up. You have allowed life and some of it. And I'm, I'm, going, I'm careful. But most of what you have given up on is your fault. Because you have not done what God has asked you and I to do. To protect your dream. To protect your heart. To protect your life. Don't you know you got to allow the spirit of the living God to steward your life? Stewardship is not money. That's one aspect of it. The Bible says that you and I got to allow the spirit of God to sanctify our life. You got to become sanctified. Holiness, righteousness still matters. The Bible says the pure in heart, baby, cold shall see God. The pure in heart. Not see God just when you get to heaven. You can see the manifestation of the kingdom right here on earth. Oh, you don't have to wait till you get to heaven and my God and live like no king and queen. Oh, my God. You can see the kingdom manifest right here, right now in your life, in your home. With your children. When you God restored your relationship with your daughter and mama, my God, you just seen the kingdom manifest. Oh, when that wayward son decided to come home and my God is sit beside you, you just seen the kingdom manifest. When you see doors automatically open, my God, for you that you know that was closed and it wasn't nobody but God that did it, you just just seen the kingdom manifest right before you. Mm. When they give you access, my God, that was denied. Oh, who that a priest access denied? Oh, when we had access that was denied, all of a sudden you walk up the door and it just and you walk in. That's kingdom manifesting right there. Oh, y'all don't want it. Oh, hey, my God. Mm. When your wife tell you you got everything, you don't need nothing. Get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> got stuff everywhere. Kingdom has accessed. Oh, I'm talking about affect the whole life. When y'all hear your pastor giving God the glory, when you hear your pastor say you got to rule it instead of let it rule you, that's what I mean by God, woman of God, affecting the whole life. What's ruling you? That God told you in Genesis 1.26, you're supposed to rule it. What's on top of you right now? Who and what is on top of you? What is dominating your mind? What is dominating your life? What do you not let go? What do you and I need to bring to the healing, the river of healing this afternoon as we get ready to bring this thing in? What, what, what is on top of you? What is dominating you? What is controlling you? What is stopping your destiny? What has robbed you of your dreams? What has wounded you so when you have quit and given it, give it up on life? You're hanging on by a limb. You're ready to shipwreck the slightest thing happened, you're done. You're thinking and plotting in your mind about ending it all. See, that concerns God. When God said, no, son, no, daughter. Don't quit on your marriage. Don't quit on your children. Give forgive. God said, I want to fix that. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, don't give up too soon. I want to make this a testimony. Yeah. Oh, my God. They counted you out, but I counted yeah, you yeah, in, my yeah, God. Yeah, they wrote yeah. you off, but I wrote you in, my God. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah, Come to the river of healing. Come to the river of healing. Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. God is saying, get in the river. You got to go deeper than church. You got to go deeper than Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons. You got to let what you get in Sunday afternoons might got to affect what you do on Monday afternoon. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. Dream again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Dream again. Dream again. Dream. Dream. Dreaming. Yes, Lord. Dreaming. Mm, my God. Be that which you desire to be. Mm. Accomplish that. Graduate like you are. Dream, Sharon. Mm. Dream, baby. Yeah. Dream. Dream, Bree. Who she kid I love about? Dream. Dream, mother. Dream, Kenny. You know what I'm talking about? Dream. You will see him do it and you will see her show up. Dream. Dream, 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 dream. Oh, ba she kid I Don't stop dreaming, Tamia. Don't stop dreaming. I don't care. Don't stop dreaming. My God, don't you stop dreaming, Barry. My God, God have need of thee, man of God. The things that God has brought you out of that most people would have died from, son. My God, it's a reason why God connected you here, man of God. Keep dreaming, my God. Stay committed, my God. Come on, go a little deeper. Come a little deeper. Come a little deeper. Come a little deeper. My God, because the spirit of entrepreneurship is on you and wealth is connected to you, son. So dream. But line it up in the Bible. Dream, Cornell, dream. Dream, mother, dream. Dream, Kanita, dream. Dream, son, dream. Dream, dream. Who dream, dream. Dream. See, y'all don't know how to receive that. Thank you, mother. You know how to receive that. Dream. Come on. If you want to dream again, raise your hand because some of you don't even dream. You can't see past right now. You so ready to quit and give up. My God. Oh, my God. Dream. Come on. Somebody say, Lord, help me dream again. Baby Cole, keep dreaming. Don't stop. Oh, my God. Keep dreaming. Come on, Sister Jackie. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Shantae Scooter, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. I'm prophesying. Oh, Trina, keep dreaming. My God. Don't stop dreaming. Come to the river of life. Come to the river of healing and let God do it for you. Dream. Somebody say, Lord, help me dream again. Oh, my God. Some of y'all, y'all don't understand. Many of you have stopped dreaming. Oh, many of you have given up. My God, but God said dream. Oh, I shall not die. I shall live. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to in the church? God is want you to dream. Come on, going over Christ Church. Dream again. I don't care who walked out, who left, who did what. You got to dream. Oh, my God. Let me give you this and I'm going to be out your way. Play softly, play softly. I'm going to give you this right here. Write this down for me right quick. Come on, y'all sit down. Let me finish this. I got a few more minutes. Uh, dream, dream. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can you keep dreaming? Oh, my God. Can you keep dreaming? Oh, my God. Jessica, stand up, daughter. Let me prophesy over you. Dream. Ah. Oh, dream. <laughs> He'll fix it. <laughs> Stay connected. <laughs> Stay in the river. Dream. Woo, my God. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Woo, mahogany. Keep dreaming. <laughs> oh, my God. My God. Come on, Corey. Just dream. Stand up, baby. Dream. Stand up. Come on. Come on. A lot of y'all, y'all in the spirit, man. Oh, some of us is giving up. My God. We have almost tapped out. Thank you, son. Oh, my God. Dream going off of Christ. Dream. Woo, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Woo, my God. Thank you, Lord. God is able. In this water, in this river, I'm sorry, there's also, you could be revived. This river brought life to that which was dead. This river was fruitful. Going off of Christ, though painful to a lot of you, but it's fruitful. This is good ground over here. This church is founded on the source 
which is God. Everything is set up to benefit your life. Every class, every 12 meeting, my God, everything that we do, preach it on Sunday, preach it on Wednesday, my God, that's why we cry a lot. <laughs> oh my God, that's why, my God, oh my God, when the Spirit of God is preaching, my God, people get up, my God, and come into the river before I ever give an altar call. My God, because this is life over here, my God. Oh my God, and a lot of people, believe it or not, don't want life, my God. It's more easier to exist in chaos, the late Dr. Miles Rose say, than to live in freedom. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Many of us are more comfortable to stay in chaos, my God, than it is to live in freedom. Many people don't want freedom, though they shout about it, they cry about it, they even ask God for it, but when God says shift so you can walk in freedom, you self-sabotage and go back to Egypt. Come on, somebody. Your eyes is on Canaan, but your mind is in Egypt. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You can see freedom, but your mind keeps taking you back to Egypt, taking you back to bondage. My God, who am I talking to in the church? Let God revive you. We walked up off in here, my God, the men of God, and I had to toil and push. Toil and push. Toil and push. Because you got cause, 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 it, it, we, I try, we try to get you to the river. Which your pastor did by allowing Minister Tony and the praise of worship team to go a little farther and go a little longer, my God, because I was trying to get you to step into the river. Many of you was on the outer court. Oh my God, you was on the outer court, my God. Outer court is flesh. God wants to bring us to the holiness of holiness. God wants to revive you, church. Live again. Me and my wife need people around me that's alive. We need people around us that's not dying on the vine. We don't need people around us that appear to be alive, but they zombies and they dying. Yeah. And it ain't because the church ain't handling this business, because you're not handling your business. I need you to still live. I need you to be revived. But can I tell you this? This river will never revive you if you don't get in it. If you never step deeper, you can say what you want to say about Peter, but out of the 12 pastors, he was the only one that was willing to step out the boat and walk on water. Oh, the only way you're going to be revived, you're going to have to step up out of your comfort zone in order to go deeper. Some of you coming to church ain't satisfying you no more. You know why? Because you're not grown church attendance. Oh my God, don't miss next week. You did not grow on church attendance. You did not grow on five minutes of worship. And it's not satisfying. You need to dream again. You need to allow this river to revive your spirit. Some of you have not fell, you, you, you didn't fell out of love with your first love. You're not in love with God. I thank God I ain't never shifted on a mother. I thank God buried 20 years later, I'm still in love. I'm in love, I'm in mad. Oh my God, you think I'm someone, I'm madly in love with God. Hey. Amen, way to cover my daughter up there. I know I'm speaking in the spirit. Distractions all over the place. Live, live. Let me give you this and get you out of here. Everything in this river touch, everything that this river, thank you Holy Ghost, touch was transformed. Everything that this river touched was transformed with life-giving power. In verse 9, it says, my God, it talks, it tells us twice, y'all. Listen to me, and I'm gonna close you. My God, it tells us twice that everything this river touches will live. When the Spirit of God moves into a life, there will be renewal. Some of you need a new touch. You need the Spirit of God to breathe on you this afternoon. Breathe. Somebody say, breathe on me, God. Come on, say, breathe on me. You're doing great work in the kingdom. You done made it all the way to the 12th month. But you say, okay, I'm about ready to tap out, so I need God to breathe. I need God to revive me. I need to go back to my source. Mm -hmm. Oh, pastor, thank you, because I almost gave up, and I really gave up on my dreams, but you just spoke life into me from the spirit. Oh, my God. Come on, go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. Say, breathe on me. So one more time. Come on. Say, breathe on me. Oh, my God. When God moves in, church, he will change things, church. When God moves in, when you get out the way and let God get in the way, listen to me. Get out the way and let God get in the way, and God will change things in your life, church. Oh, my God, I'm getting ready to close it, my God. And so he would change things. Oh, my God, he would take what is dead, remember. Oh, my God, and cause it to live. What's dead? What's dead? If you come to the river, God, he will revive you. He will cause you to live. 
bring your dreams, bring your finances, bring your pain, bring your marriage, bring your children. Oh my God, bring your grandchildren, bring the pain of your mama, the pain of your absentee daddy, all the stuff that's bothering you and killing you, my God. Bring it so God can breathe on it. And then you want to tell God, only bring back to life that what is supposed to live, but everything that's supposed to die, let it die. That's when you got to get comfortable. Please don't miss next week. That's why you got to get comfortable with the will of God. Because we try to keep alive something that God said, no, clip it and let it die. <sighs> oh, let me finish. Ephesians 2, 1 through 4, for those that are still taking notes. Notes. As for you, the Bible says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. Talking to Christians, Paul. You used to live. You were dead in your sins. When you followed, the Bible said, the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the earth. The spirit who has now worked in those who are disobedient. All of us used to live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following his desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving God's death. Our wrath. That's why I thank God for the Lord's Supper and Communion, Pastor. Who Paul is talking to the church saying you used to live like this. You should no longer be living like this. You should no longer be dead in your transgressions and sin, Christians. And because of this, because you and I as Christians are choosing, my God, the flesh, Romans 8, 5. Oh, our mind is set and dominated by the flesh. We are heaping up, the Bible says in Ephesians, the wrath of God on our life. God loves you and I. Don't make God do nothing he don't want to do. What do you mean by make God... Because don't you know, God has to honor your choice and my choice. Uh, yes, he does. God has to respect, Stacy, your decisions. That's if right. you choose to do it, he's going to respect it. But are you ready for the consequences? He has to respect my choice. He gives you and I free will, Sharon. So therefore, you and I got to be ready to deal with the consequences of your free will. That's what I mean. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And this last thing, it could bring forth fr freshness. Yeah. That's it. It had no feeder. It could heal. It could revive. And it could bring forth fruit and freshness. Do you got any fruit? Good fruit. When I bite the apple, Dominic, do I swallow it or do I spit it out? Uh. Are we producing fruit amongst our significant others? Tough time your pastor didn't walk through. Are you producing fruit in the presence of those that love you? When you come around, my God, your family members come over, or you go over to their house, my God, is there a freshness about you? When things is going on in the family, are they calling you or is they going somewhere else? When you have family get together and stuff, who they asking to pray? They may ask, you, you, you huddled up, my God, and they ask somebody that you know ain't living nothing to pray. And they, why did they ask you? They, Something is wrong right there. Oh, they just hate. No, they ain't. They looking at the freshness and the fruit that you produce for 12 months. This river wants to bring a freshness to you. Every person that has got out the river and has disconnected from the river will die. That's Bible. Yeah. This is a prophetic yeah. word. If you stay connected to the source, you'll live. If you disconnect from the source and get out the river, you're going to die. Purpose and dreams and all that will die. Everywhere this river flow, fruit, fruit sprang up. This river was powerful because God allowed this river to come about in a desert. And even in the midst of this desert, God showed Ezekiel a dead sea, no outlet. Everything that's supposed to go into a dead sea dies. There's no freshness. There's no healing. You can't be revived. It's not the source. Because think about the source. The source, thank you, Holy Ghost, sustains what it's connected to. 
the root, the, the branches from a tree has to do with this root system. Are you listening to me? In order to, for a plant to spring up, the source is the dirt. When you uproot yourself from out of your source, you're going to die. When you justify uprooting and sitting, you can't just up, you can't just transplant yourself, just uproot and say, I don't want to be placed right there. Even though God placed you right there, you decide to move over here. You decide, not God. You transplant it, but you will die. It's just a matter of time before it show up that you did. Who this is? God is saying, come to the river. God is saying, don't, don't, don't abort the river. This is a miracle river. It's flowing in the desert. Everything around you is dead. Everything around you is dead. You can't see nothing but death all around you. And in that one little bitty stream is life. Broad is the road that leads to destruction and many there is that be on it. Narrow is the, the road. Narrow is the river and few find it. God has given everybody under the sound of my voice an opportunity to come to the river. I don't know. You may need your heart healed. You may need to be healed physically in your body. You may need your mind healed. You may need to be healed all the way back from your childhood to presence. You may need God to heal and cause you to dream again. We have killed our marriages even in our minds. We have said, I don't want it no more. I'm done. We have cursed our children verbally as well as in our mind. We need to come to the river. We have given up dreaming. We have given up, my God, and we're ready to walk away even from our walk with Christ. 